Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, this is a recording. I'm just going to come in at you with a black and white value demo. Uh, this thing right here, up, upside down right here. So I have, um, you know, the kind of uh, black to white uh, all across here, uh, black to white with the white square in the middle and the black to white with the black square in the middle. And uh, e oh, do it like this. All right. <clears throat> And yeah, I, I have you do this. This will be like really helpful when we're making our, uh, when you're working on your black and white painting, we can kind of refer to these values when you're, when you're making your painting and trying to figure out like what, um, you know, what, what value to use. Um, and then, yeah, I like including the, for these, uh, for these value scales, I like including the white square in the middle and the black square in the middle, just because that kind of gives you an idea of, uh, of each value in relation to white and each value in relation to black. And painting oftentimes is the, about the, uh, you know, there, there's an element of painting or a big part of painting is the relationship between, uh, you know, different values, two values up against one another. Um, yeah, so this is my value scale. I did, I ended up uh, using a horizontal format and I ended up doing a one, 1 1.5 by 1 1.5 square. I did an inch border on the top here and just a quarter inch border uh, on the sides. And that gave me kind of enough room for nine, uh, nine 1.5 by 1.5 squares. Um, yeah, I'm gonna show you a video of, of me making the value scale. Uh, another thing to note is that I've, uh, for the, the kind of, um, I, I put a coat of gesso on this uh, canvas board first. And um, I mixed in a little tiny little bit of black in this uh, canvas board. And you can see that there's like, you know, it's just ever, ever so slightly light gray. Um, if you look at, uh, you know, I don't know. And, and I did that because then the, the white shows up really well. You can see this is the white paint and this is the light gray. So I made just a very, very light gray background. Um, cool. I'm gonna show you the video. Uh, for this black and white value scale. Um, let me share screen really quickly. Uh, where is that video at? Ah, here we go. All right. And so, yeah, I, I, I attempted to kind of put this video together. I'm not sure if it's uh, how, how great it is. I had some trouble. I wanted to edit it down a little bit. I had, there's all this stuff with video anyways. Um, we'll get to it, but uh, there we go. So you can see on the table there, I've kind of laid out my, um, you know, I got, I get these mailers in the, the mail for grocery stores and, uh, you know, I, I kind of use them as drop cloths. There's my 11 by 14 canvas board right there. You can maybe hear the uh, like a burglar alarm from a warehouse next door. And yeah, there I got my palette paper. I'm just gonna lay that out. And you know, you got the shiny side of the power palette paper. That is where I'll be mixing my paint. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, a lot of painting is figuring out the setup. And I kind of always like to have my palette and uh, you know brushes and everything on the on the on either like kind of my top right or the right side of me, um, and, you know, and that way you know you're you you can reach over to your palette very easily. I got my ivory black and my titanium white paints, um, and yeah, I just if you saw that there, I just kind of put some gesso on. Uh, with my palette knife on onto the palette paper. And uh, I, I used too much gesso this time around. I would recommend just using like a half scoop from your palette knife. And now I'm gonna take a little bit of ivory black and I wanna mix that into my gesso. Um, so, um, and that is what I'll be priming my canvas with. I'm making, I wanted to make like a light gray, uh, uh, you know, a, a light gray gesso. So I'm mixing, I'm tinting or sorry, toning my gesso with a little bit of black. And I just took about the size of like uh, three ants worth of black paint. Um, and I'm just kind of mixing that into uh, so there. And there's a slight video glitch. Uh, there we go, back to mixing the gesso. And you see how I'm just mixing that with the palette knife, just with the kind of uh, 
yeah, I just want to get get that color uh, all mixed up, like I was mixing a uh, cake batter. And I wanted it a little more gray. I feel like the Blick Ivory Black, it's a little weak. And also my camera works a little shaky and a little glitchy too. But yeah, I put a little black in there. Again, I have, I'm using uh, three of my flat brushes for this. I'm not gonna start painting yet, but I just wanted to start the, the gesso first before I draw out all my squares. I'm gonna be drawing out uh, squares onto my um, canvas board. And again, I apologize for the glitchiness of this video. I was, I don't know, I was having some trouble recording it, but, um, or I don't know if that's the editing process, but I'm, I'm mixing my gesso, you know, mix it up. And, you know, I just put it up, I put the kind of color of the gesso I mixed against the white of my canvas board. And um, yeah, just looking at that super, super glitched, glitched out video, but, you know, hopefully you can follow along. Kind of wrinkled my face in disgust at how glitchy this video is. And yeah, normally I would use a, a three, my three inch gesso brush, but I, I couldn't find that at the time. So I got just kind of a slightly large brush and um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna be using to, uh, to uh, use the gesso. Uh, every time I use my palette knife, I like to wipe it clean. Palette knives have a tendency to get pretty dirty and it can get pretty hard to clean them. So again, I have my rags there, which was just an old cut up shirt and I'm just wiping my palette clean. Um, and I forgot to put on gloves. Uh, so there we go. I have the gloves that I put on and now I'm, uh, uh, yeah, I, I have, I also got a container of water, like a, like a hummus container of water to kind of, and I dipped my brush in just to wet the brush a little bit. And uh, yeah, once I kind of got, got my gesso going, I, um, yeah, I'm just kind of spreading, I'm just kind of spreading a layer of gesso all around my, my canvas board there with a larger brush. You, you know, hopefully you'll be using your three inch uh, gesso brush, but for this time around, I just, grab this kind of larger brush that I had around the studio. And you know, for gessoing a canvas, I just like to cover the canvas and I just go back and forth, back and forth, up and down, you know, just spreading it out as thinly as possible. Think of it as if you uh, painted a wall, kind of the same idea, but you know, just getting it a thin, even coat. That's what I wanted for this. Um, and then once you finish your gessoing, you gotta wait for the gesso to dry. So you wait about an hour for the gesso to dry. And once you wait, once the gesso dries, then you can start uh, kind of drawing out your squares with the ruler. Again, I'm in fast speed here, drawing out the squares with a, with a ruler. I have that uh, inch border at the top and then the quarter inch border on the sides there. You know, measuring out, I kind of make two little, uh, that's something I learned in grade school. If you want to draw a straight line, you kind of have to measure out two different marks and you connect the two marks. Um, and I like just kind of measuring out uh, straight squares when I'm making any kind of color study or, um, or you know, a value study uh, that, that requires a gradient. Because, uh, yeah, then it can kind of, uh, you know, I can kind of practice my... Um, my manual dexterity, my, what's the word? Someone's probably yelling out the word right now. Oh yeah, so I have nine squares there. Um, and yeah, I'm just measuring out more squares. I'm putting, uh, yeah, so in between each kind of value scale, nine step value scale, I'm putting roughly a uh, two inch gap just to give each side kind of room, you know, measuring it out, I have my ruler. Uh, sorry for the shakiness of the video. Hope you don't get seasick. And I'm just using the lines I created to kind of create the, the lines uh, for this, this value scale right here. And again, just using a pencil and a ruler, very simple. All right, and then I just got to measure out the last one and then I think we are almost good to go. All right. Again, I apologize. There is, uh, you know, shaky camera work, and there's a warehouse alarm going off in the distance. Uh, right now, I'm in my studio. You probably noticed I have these two uh, works in progress behind me. I usually try to hide that stuff, but figure whatever. I don't want to have to to move everything around, and maybe it's good to, you know, you can see 
you'll get to see how these develop over the quarter. So anyways, I have like, yeah, so I have, uh, you know, three rows, nine steps each. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just kind of firming up some of the, the lines there. Um, and right now I'm kind of measuring up the center squares. And one of the reasons I like doing the 1.5 uh, measurement is that I, it's, uh, it was easier to kind of make a perfect uh, center square, a 0.5 inch by 0.5 inch center square. You can see I just measured like, you know, did two, two marks for the middle measurement and, and another mark over there. And I'm just going down the line and making a, you know, um, kind of, uh, uh, a mark at the half inch and the one inch mark. Doing the same thing on this side. You know, not the most fun part of painting, measuring things out, but you know, you can find some kind of a, a Zen like joy in that. I don't know if you, you know, I don't, I, I don't know anything about Zen, but you know, just, I kind of get into just like kind of measuring things out and uh, yeah. And I think right now I'm doing some action off screen. Uh, unfortunately, the camera didn't pick that up. Um, I don't usually do painting tutorials. This is my first video painting tutorial. Uh, so um, yeah, usually I'm, I'm on doing, doing more drawing stuff. So it's a little shaky. So if I do more of these over the quarter, hopefully we'll be back in person. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm just kind of measuring, you know, making the lines to kind of get these center squares and then uh yeah figuring out ways to just get the, the 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 center squares in there there we go yeah drawing the lines on top there all right doing a little bit of erasing you know what i was using a, the back of a pencil eraser, it's better if you have a gum eraser to erase your lines. You don't want, you want like a separate eraser, a separate pencil. Um, yeah, just measuring out some more squares. <clears throat> You can see that my camera is attached to my table. I have to figure out a fix to that. That's why it's so, so shaky. Um, yeah, just doing a little bit of erasing. You can also use, uh, you know, paint to 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 kind of erase pencil marks. And uh, oh, there was like another weird. Ah, why did that that get put in there? Uh, <laughs> some bit of bit of a glitch. Um, so once I once I have all my squares drawn out, uh, yeah, I'm putting it putting on gloves. Um, <laughs> I got my three flats. Those are the three brushes I'm using. Got my three flats and my palette knife. And uh, yeah, I got my black and white paint. And I'm gonna go ahead. And I'm going to uh, put the black paint on there. Uh, first and the white paint, squeeze out black, squeeze out white, do it on e either side of the palette just so you have some room to, uh, yeah, some room to maneuver. Um, so I'm using a smaller brush. I dipped it in a little water and I'm just kind of, uh, you know, kind of coaxing some of the paint out, separating some of the paint from the kind of mass and, uh, you know, wiping out some of the paint when you, to get a thin line on the brush, you don't want too much, you don't want too much of a loaded brush, uh, you know, and that's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm just trying to get a thin kind of outline for, for this, uh, this painting or for this, this uh, black square that I'm painting in. And yeah, I'm just doing for this black square, I'm just doing black out of the tube. Um, the, uh, the Blick uh, ivory black is a little transparent. I'm kind of noticing that as I'm going over the square. So I'm gonna probably be going in with a, uh, another layer of, of paint on, on this. Um, and yeah, I'm just trying to get a flat, uh, for this exercise, I'm just gonna get, try to get as flat a coat as possible. Um, there we go. Yeah, just trying to draw a straight line. Again, helps my kind of uh, fine motor skills or keeps my fine motor skills in practice. Um, there we go. And 
Yeah, just kind of firming up. Sometimes you have to go over a line a couple times to get it straight. Um, yeah, I'm just outlining it now. I'll probably go in with a larger brush to fill in the uh, fill in the rest of it. And I'm doing kind of the donut technique on each one where I'm like kind of painting everything around that middle square and I'll go in with either white paint or black paint. Um, but yeah, doing the donut technique. I found that that was kind of uh, a lot of painting is like strategizing, like how you're going to paint something like beforehand. And, you know, as I was drawing out these squares, I figured that, uh, yeah, the, um, the, the donut technique, painting everything around the square would be good. Uh, um, And yeah, just kind of drawing everything around the square. All right. All right, and yeah, there we go. See, just doing, yeah, doing the donut technique, painting it in to the best of my ability. Yeah, you kind of have to go over things a couple times. And since I have the black paint out, I'm just gonna do all of my black squares. Kind of went in with a bigger brush there very briefly. Clean it off with a little water. All right, now I'm gonna mix my middle gray. So I'm trying to get halfway, exactly halfway between black and white. So you know, uh, square number five, more or less. That's my middle gray. So, um, yeah, it's just just mixing it around, trying to get get to that halfway mark. Yeah, just keep, I keep adding black paint till I, I kind of figure out, you know, I kind of have to eyeball what, what I think is in the middle. And uh, yeah, it, it can be kind of, you know, it's like sometimes you, you mix a color, you think it's like, oh, this is the middle gray, then you put it on the paper like I did right now, I put my middle grays on. And I think sometimes you have to tune it up, you know, it's almost like tuning a guitar. Sometimes you're like, oh, that's not quite the middle gray. So you have to like, uh, put a slight, a slightly darker layer in, in there. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah, sometimes you have to paint over things. Uh, right now I'm going over, you know, the, the ivory black was a little too light. So I wanted to go over with another coat just to get a nice deep, rich black on that. Um, there we go. And yeah, so there's my, once I have the middle gray, then I kind of, I'm just gonna go ahead and pause this. Whoops, go back a little bit. All right, pause that. So once I have my middle gray, uh, this was the kind of middle gray I kind of landed on. I want like one tone, I'm gonna go one tone in between the, uh, one tone in between the white and, and the middle gray. So find the middle of that. And then I'm going to find the middle of these two. So you're always with doing a value scale, you know, going steps like nine to one, black to white. You're always trying to find the middle of each thing. So you don't progress uh, chronologically. You always want to try to find the middle of each, uh, of, of, you know, of, of every square. Um, yeah, there's kind of just some grays I, I've mixed. Um, yeah, so you see I'm, I'm kind of working and trying to find like one lighter. Uh, messed up a little there, I'm gonna clean it up. And uh, yeah, I'm starting to figure out, this is what I mean by kind of tuning. Let me, let's go back a little bit. Um, like kind of tuning the grays, you know, tuning. So I have my, my white here and then I realized that there was, uh, this, you know, um, my, 
my the the thing between uh, this gray and the middle gray it was a little too dark at first, so I went over with a slightly lighter gray, and then I'm gonna go in over this gray with a slightly lighter gray. So um, yeah, so you're always you know even when you're doing value scales, sometimes once the paint gets on the canvas, you may have to correct it and go over uh, go over your value with another layer of paint. Um, and again, once you find the grays for your squares, you can go ahead and fill in the, the other grays as well. Um, and it says there's a lot of time left on this video. There's kind of like me kind of mixing my grays. Uh, um, and yeah, see, there we go. There's an example of kind of tuning the grays again, like you're tuning the guitar, you're trying to find that right gray. So I got my, I was satisfied with that middle gray. Uh, you know, and then I got the middle gray between that and then I went slightly lighter here. I um, mean, feel free to tune your grays as, as you wish. You know, you're looking, you want like a satisfying uh, progression of, of gray tones. Um, and that's part of painting. It's like almost like, yeah, you're like tuning into certain colors. You're just being very aware of, of certain colors and just kind of like, you know, tune, tuning it slightly. Oh, that gray needs to be a little lighter. And then, you know, you go over and you paint it lighter or it needs to be darker. And yeah, you're always thinking about the relationships between values, colors, tones in a painting. Um, there we go. And there I'm almost finished with my value scale. As you can see, I kind of painted the donuts around everything. And uh, yeah, and, and now I'm gonna go in and the last step is uh, I went in with a tiny brush and I painted, uh, painted, you know, I, I actually painted in the white squares and I painted in the black squares. And uh, that's roughly what your finished uh, value scale should look like. And I encourage you if you could get even neater than I, I you know, I was, I was kind of messy with this, but um, again, I put down a, a, a ground, uh, a gesso ground of kind of light gray. And, um, and, and I did that. So, you know, when I painted like a white square on top of the, the ground, uh, you know, it would pop a little bit. Um, and yeah, I love this. I love seeing how, uh, you know, I, I just love like value scales, how you can see how like that, like uh, uh, how the, a white square like looks uh, compared to how, how, just how like kind of like, bam, that white on the black square is versus like a white on like kind of a dark gray or a black on a dark gray and, you know, vice versa. You can just kind of see, see each value in relation to white and in relation to black. Um, cool, and I think that's about it. Um, all right, and that's a wrap. Uh, apologize for some of the glitches. Um, let's see here. Uh, um, anyways, uh, yeah, so, um, Let's see. Oh yeah, I was. Uh, was there anything I needed to add? I think. I think that's about it. You know, I would just say, yeah, make sure you kind of gesso your board, and you know, if you want, you can kind of tint your gesso. That's like a pro tip uh, that I recommend. And uh, yeah, just take your time and be patient with this. And uh, you know, these value scales are nice to have, and they'll serve you well down the road. And um, yeah. I hope you enjoy my demo and please feel free to contact me with any questions and I will see you all on Wednesday. All right, take care everyone, bye.